Welcome to my first video. Uh, this is based on using a dummy battery connected to a V-Lock to the Canon EOS R6. What you see in front of you are what's going to be involved in the um, in actually doing this. Uh, there are a number of reasons why I want to be to power the R6 beyond what the uh, Canon LP batteries provide. So just to give you an idea of what, what I've got, there's R6 with the EF 17-40mm uh, L lens. It's got a basic Canon adapter on there. Um, it's surrounded, the R6 itself is surrounded by a cage and I will explain what these are later on and why I've got the flaps already open. Um, the other thing I should point out is the memory. I've got two ProGrade cards in there, 128 gigs in size, so that's in slot number two. I might have it the other way around. And this is the second one. So they're um, V60 in speed. In terms of powering, you've got the genuine Canon battery that comes with the camera. In this case, it's the LP E6NH. Should be fully charged. So I'll come back to this later. I have a V-Lock battery, 150 watts for, from X-Pro. Um, you can get so many different types of V-Locks. I'm not going to spend too much time going through this and explain the different sizes. Uh, this one has a D-Tap and a USB, which I actually don't use. And the reason why I don't use that is because I connect the V-Lock, the uh, battery, to this V-Lock mount. So it's from a uh, Kamet. And uh, it has uh, several inputs, USB 5 volts, uh, 7.2 volts, uh, D-Tap and 12 volts. Along with that, along with the V-mount uh, came this dummy battery, which is a no-name DC coupler for DR-E6. Um, nothing major about this. It delivers as you can see actually, um, it's saying 5D, so I used this originally for my 5D Mark II and it happens to work with the R6. I also have an extension cable that connects to the dummy battery, which then allows me to connect to the V-mount. And uh, just to show, because I know there are always concerns uh, when a non-canon battery is used, whether dummy or otherwise, uh, whether what the power output is and that kind of thing. So I'll be demonstrating that before I actually switch on the camera. For other things, I also have a multimeter, um, which I'll be using just to uh, demonstrate the uh, voltage coming out of the battery into the V-mount, into the um, dummy battery. Okay. One or two things I shall do before I start is just switch this on. As you can see, uh, default uh, camera setups. Um, this is for the video. Uh, so key thing here, uh, you can see where it says 29 minutes, 59 seconds. And also just above that, you can just about see um, the battery fully charged. Amongst other things, I'm just shooting manual mode using C-Log and uh, I'm shooting 4K, 25 frames per second, so by shutter speed it's a 50th, f4.0, so as wide open as the lens can go, and um, I've left ISO to auto, um, though usually I will change that uh, during the shoot. Uh, if I bring this here, you can also see at the present moment I've got the camera set to manual focus, and then I've got it set to autofocus and so on. Okay, so I'm going to switch this off for a moment and put together the rest of the equipment. So what we have is a V-Lock V-60 
V-lock battery, V-lock mount, put them together, and as simple as that, it clicks in. On this side is a release button, so you press that release button, and it comes apart. Um, one of the things I find difficult with V-locks is it's quite easy to actually knock this. So you've got to keep an eye on the battery and make sure it's pretty well secure. Um, this battery allows me to get an idea as to what the, uh, how much charge is left. So by pressing that button there, it will show me 4 watts. So I will then normally connect this cable into the 7.2 volt section of the uh, V-mount. I will then also then connect the end of the cable to the dummy battery and then the dummy battery will go into the um, EOS R6. For now before I do that I'm just going to quickly show something. One of the things that always concerns people, in me in particular because it took me a long time to decide uh, to go with this setup, is how do I know that the, the voltage coming out of the battery going into the V-mount and going into the dummy battery is about 8 volts. Well, I shall show you how to find out. Okay, this here is a 2.1 millimeter adapter, DC adapter, and it's got positive and negative. So um, let's just see if we can see that. Over here, this is negative and it goes in the outer ring, and you can just about see here the positive which is actually the internal side of things so what I'm going to do to try and clarify what I mean switch on the voltmeter bring this closer this is a negative and this is a positive so if I can get this just right if you keep an eye on the, the meter if I touch that and I touch that need to switch it on first so you switch it on that way so if I touch up there and touch this here you can see on the voltmeter 0.7.98 volts uh, so I know that um, the battery is delivering that to the adapter and from uh, from that adapter it would feed into the dummy battery if I was to accidentally switch the polarities round, uh, touch that and that, it will still show me on the voltmeter, uh, the voltmeter, 0.7.98. But if you look at the uh, left-hand side of the zero, you see a dash, so it's showing a negative. So this is telling me that the polarity is actually um, the wrong way around. So my positive um, from this test is showing um, is that small point there and um, my I beg by my positive is that point there um, my negative is this point here so uh, without doing any connections or any soldering that's what I need to remember make sure I get it right okay so let's put aside the wall meter which I'll be needing anymore at least for the time in in my next video I plan to actually uh, use it a, a lot more. So what I'm doing here, I showed you the connection earlier. Um, so I'm going to connect the same adapt the same cable now to the 7.2 volts in there. And before I connect the dummy battery to the R uh, the EOS R6, I just point out again uh, the important thing for me is. Um, seeing the battery read out and getting some idea as to um, recording time that kind of thing okay so I shall turn that off put in the dummy battery be a little careful with this you want to make sure that um, you don't slice the cable so if you see, if we can see that, the cable, there's a flap here, uh, so flap about here, 
And what I've done is lower that flap and then connect it to close the uh, cover. So you can see the cables coming uh, through that flap without a problem. Now when you do that, uh, because this is non-canon battery, this is what happens. So let's switch it on. The very first thing you see is this message. Battery communication error. Does this battery, do these batteries display the Canon logo? The answer is no, they don't. All right, if you say yes, um, at this stage, the camera will shut down. So let's just say no. A second message comes up saying, Canon does not guarantee the performance or safety of this battery, these batteries continue use. I want to say yes. Okay. So when you do that, you now find that the R6 has been powered by a dummy battery. Number of differences, the most important being, um, you can't, you no longer can see a, a battery, a battery re out, which is a blank. Now the difficulty here is, although I know that uh, this um, this the V lock this V lock battery will actually charge the um, R6 for several hours, I have to keep an eye on things to make sure that the battery doesn't just. Uh, finish and, um, while shooting. So one of the ways to do that is by pressing that button there and I have to keep an eye on it. So what's the purpose of this? Um, many people out there will know that the Canon R6, in fact um, also the R5 and um, the digital SLRs from Canons, they've got a recording limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds before before recording stops and then you have to restart them. There's also another problem which um, the R5 and R6 in particular suffer from which is overheating uh, to a lesser extent um, now because of uh, several firmware updates however uh, if you shoot long enough um, at 4k for in my case for the R6 it will overheat and you'll then have to part off the the, cam the camera and let it cool down before you can resume uh, use of it. Um, if people are interested I can actually provide my experience as to how long it takes. Um, so what I needed to do then is to go from a situation where there's some limitations with the Canon and to try and overcome them. Now the way I do that is by using this, an external recorder. Okay, so uh, we have a situation where the external recorder helps to address some of the issues that the um, Canon uh, mirrorless cameras, in this case, in my particular case, the R6 has, in that um, I want to be able to record beyond 29 minutes and 59 seconds. For example, if shooting a wedding or something like that, um, I could just put it somewhere, let it record. I also want to avoid overheating. Now, what you, what I have here, and I've got it pretty much set up. Um, I, I tend to use a cage for a lot of things. So this is the um, this is a black magic um, black magic design um, video assist seven inch twelve G. Um, so the the latest one they've got. It's got the latest firmware. Um, what I've done, um, certainly when I'm powering this with the R6 and uh, a Canon battery in the R6 is to allow me to run gun. So the, the current setup is I've got a cage that you see here and uh, the cage has some HDMI etc uh, locks to prevent the cable being pulled out. So this is a HDMI cable. Um, um, I also have a handle which you can see over here. And uh, that handle attached to the monitor itself and to the uh, cage on the R6 via this uh, mechanism here. Um, this basically means that the R6 body is not put under any stress or the stress is placed in the frame. So if we look at this side, you've got 
in this case HDMI in you've got HDMI out you've got several SDI in and out connectors and you've got two uh, mini XLR uh, connectors there don't quite use these that much and I haven't yet got to use the SDI uh, so hopefully if I uh, switch if I upgrade to a different kind of uh, camera that kind of thing in terms of movies then I might find I'm using more of these than anything else but for now um, they're not being used if I turn this round you can just about see two SD slots so similar to the um, to the R6 I have prograde in there uh, 128 gigs in size um, in, in both slots so this is number two uh, V60 speed and over here you see uh, where the power cable goes headphones this is how you switch it on um, the other, before I actually, I've got at the back of it uh, two uh, full size, I think they are, Sony uh, batteries. So these are standard and they fit into two slots uh, slot number one and slot number two. Uh, I'm just trying to see where it labels it. I hear it. This is number two and that's number one. And um, so at the present moment, you'll be charged using the battery and I shall then switch to, to using the V lock to charge it. The other thing I should mention is I've also got a Samsung SSD T5 attached to this and the reason being I, I have total and increased capacity um, in when it comes to videoing and it connects uh, to the um, monitor itself or the record itself via USB which is this cable here USB-C cable so let's switch it on so you can just see what it looks like it's a bit of uh, because it's top screen it actually picks up a lot of fingerprints so my apologies for that let's bring this closer okay so by default I set it uh, to use ProRes 422 because I haven't connected the R6 to it uh, currently the format is no signal you can see the source is HDMI um, and you can see the two batteries here so if I click on that it will show that both batteries are 100% and so on if you see down here our uh, controls for so I'm moving from clips recording play stop and you can see the media that I actually use here so if I press at the present moment it's set for uh, using slot 1 which is uh, 128 gigs and then it's got slot 2 and slot 3 so if, if, if I switch to this screen you can see that um, I do it in reverse order the Samsung T5 has been formatted in fact let's, let's just do a format now so pick that format the drive okay so it's ready okay so um, with the with the T5 no clips in there it's been formatted 500 gigs everything's formatted to XFAT um, for number two 128 gigs uh, for number one it's the same thing right to make sure uh, at least pick the initial order of recording I've selected number three so the T5 and that blue uh, color there uh, confirms it okay what I shall do now is to uh, power this off take out the, um, the batteries and connect the um, recorder to the V mount so the V lock battery can power not just the R6 it can also power the um, uh, recorder as well so. okay so turn this around there's one battery gone Two batteries, second battery gone. Okay, so actually, what I should have done, let's see if I can tilt it slightly like this so you can see. Now, I power the um, recorder by using this V mount cable or this uh, DTAP cable. Um, the cable actually came with the uh, 
comet beam out. So I'm using everything that's default at the present moment. So I'm just turning off the R6, which was on all the time. Turn this off for a moment. I'm now going to connect this to the DTAP. Okay. I'm also now going to connect this to the power area. Okay, and what I shall do is turn on, oops, be careful there, turn on the uh, remount. Okay, so what we'll be able to see when I turn this device on first, and then turn on the R6. Remember what I said about uh, making sure you answer things in the right sequence. If you don't, you have to take out the battery. Like this, and put it back in. Turn that on. No. Yes. As you see, nothing so far. That's because I haven't connected the R6 to the uh, recorder via the HDMI. And the reason why I'm doing that is before because I wanted to do some changes to the menu. So if I go like this. Uh, Um, I've saved some of these already in my, my uh, menu, just to make it easier. number of things to look at now. Because I've got the um, R6 being powered by the uh, V-Lock v battery, v battery, there's no commun communication to the battery. And that's what it shows in bat battery info. So it tells you that. When you're using an external a power to, um, to, uh, to run the R6. One of the things you should consider doing, going into power save mode, making sure auto power off is dis uh, disabled, and the, the others you can leave according to what you want. So let's just put this here, change this to 10 minutes um, for the display to go off. Viewfinder I'm not gonna use here, so I can leave it at one, one minute. But the other thing I do, is I'm using Canon Log. If I wasn't using Canon Log, then I turn this off. And I'm not going to go through the settings here. Um, I'm expecting people. Um, there's. A, I'm expecting there's a lot of information out there. Uh, if people want to know how to set it up. The important thing is when I connect the um, the R6 to the monitor, I need to change HDMI display settings. So I need to change it from what it was just a, the simple screen to this camera and the screen. When you do that, you'll get a, um, a message saying, card recorder not supported. Device connected via HDMI is used instead of camera for many display and image playback. So what this is basically saying is, in this particular setting, it will not record to the SD cards that I've got on the R6. It will record onto whatever is on the um, external monitor. In this case, the Blackmagic Design. Okay, that's what I want. Go like that. And just come all the way out. Okay, just being a bit safe here. I'm just going to turn that off for the time in. And turn this off as well. What I'm going to do here is then connect the HDMI, HDMI cable to the R6. To save a bit of time, I've already removed the flap and you can just about see the HDMI socket here, which will go there. These are um, for the, for basically locking in the uh, cable so it's not easily pulled out. At the present moment, I've just put it on the other two so it's out of the way. So I'm just going to connect this in there. So that's it. Normally, I then take this out and then screw it in there and make sure it's harder to pull the cable out. I will then switch on 
like that. Okay. So what you're seeing here is everything that the R6 is the same. Right. So what does it mean? On the on this device, we'll see it's still a ProRes 422, and you also see that its um, format is now um, 4K or 2160p at 25 frames per second. You see the source is HDMI, and you see also just here that AC is now being recognised as powering the um, the recorder. I want to just switch to to using the Samsung. Okay, so in this current setup, um, what does it mean? I can um, when I tested this out, and I kept on reformatting the uh, media as soon as one's filled up, um, it will move. Then it's, the recording moved to the next one. I was able to power the R6 and the monitor for three hours and fifty-five minutes and record for that amount of time. Now, to be safe, I'd say three and a half hours. And of course, you know, um, if I want to carry two V-Lock batteries with a charger, and um, I, I can basically, when I got up to about three, three and a half hours with one, I swap it out, put the other one uh, in the charger, and start using the, the one I've just got from the charger. So, um, before I carry on, I just want to also show you what you can see now. Um, you've got to be a little careful here in that um, you don't want to press something like menu whilst you're uh, doing the connection because the, uh, the menu will switch over to this screen instead. Um, and if you try recording, you will record whatever is shown on the screen which is not what you want to record. Um, so make sure you take it off. Um, I have I've taken off things like focus peaking, which will be about here. So let's just take a look. Our focus assistant, as it's called, and a few other things like zebra and so on. I've taken those off, uh, just to so it's not distracting. Okay, so how do we start recording? Um, we do it a number of ways. My apologies for leaving the handle on there. Next time I remember to take it off. I can either start recording by pressing the R6, the record button, and as you can see, that started recording. So whatever it points to, it records. If I if I stop on here, it stops also. The recorder. I can then choose if I want to do it directly from the recorder itself and it starts that way and it stops that way and it's recording to the a Samsung T5 when it does that I think it switches to slot number one and then goes to slot number two and so on so you've got plenty of time as you can see uh, for the Samsung T5 I've got it's 500 gigs I've got 134 minutes at the current settings and 34 minutes for the um, the SD cards. Um, the other thing to bear in mind with this is that um, everything that the R6 sees is, can be recorded. So it's only when you start the record either via the R6 or via the uh, recorder and it will just keep on going. And keep on going. The other thing, if I change the menu in here, uh, let's just go up to here. What I want to do is just scroll down to to change this to the movie size. So I hopefully you can see this. Right. I want to go 4K 50p. Uh, because I'm using the power system, 
it's at 50 frames a second. If I was using the um, NTSC or America system, then it was 60 frames per second. So I change it there, it's been accepted. Just remember to take this all the way out. Okay, then you can see here that it's now showing 2160p at 50 frames. I usually forget, and um, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do that. Once you change that, you've got to remember to go to the camera itself. And you've got to remember to change the uh, shutter speed to twice the uh, the frames per second. So I'm going to change that to 100th. Okay. And if I start recording now. You can see they record. So what they record is just to uh, recap. What it allows me to do is bypass the 29 minutes of 59 seconds. Um limitation that the R6 has. It also avoids the overheating problem that the, the R6 has. At least in my case I was able to record for 3055 minutes and didn't have any overheating issues. And the other thing that I began to appreciate is that ProRes 422 is a lot easier to edit and grade. I use DaVinci Resolve um, than H265 which the um, R6 stars uh, uses. So that's a third bonus here. Of course, the additional problem, uh, the, the overheads is I'm now gonna have um, uh, external memory. And you know sometimes it can get a bit cumbersome having to carry two things at once. So to give an idea, if I was just powering things without the V-Lock, it looks a bit messy at the present moment, but uh, I can assure you it's a lot easier than that, a lot more comfortable it's just the wires that okay let's change that okay oh, I missed it a second time let's see if I can get it ah that's better it's a lot easier to do than because I'm trying to avoid hitting the camera uh, stop the recording and so on, it makes it a little awkward. So, ah, that's better. At last, success. Hey, <laughs> okay. Uh, and you can see I can lift this and imagine I was um, using different batteries here. It's a lot easier to use. Um, future videos will show me connecting all of this to to a uh, glide cam, to also a shoulder, um, shoulder uh, construction, and obviously you could use it on a tripod. So there we are, let's stop. And uh, just to give you an idea as to play, I'll take this off again. All the clips are right here, so you could move between different clips. And so on, so on, so on. So got good playback, etc. Um, yeah, that's generally the the key things. Um, as I said, it's very useful for video. It may well be useful for people doing astro photography or something like that. It certainly will be useful for anyone doing time lapse that wants to leave the camera somewhere for quite some time. And um, I hope this video proves to be very useful to people. I will be actually uh, doing another video uh, and showing how to actually, if I move this out of the way. How to connect the this is a Canon, official Canon DC coupler, DR E6. So I will be showing how to uh, remove this adapter, replace it with something that's more standard. Anyone that's bought this particular adapter will know that uh, um, at the present moment, to my knowledge, you're supposed to connect it to an AC adapter provided by Canon. Obviously that's not gonna help anyone that uh, it wants to do uh, external work away from a power socket. Um, but wants to use a V-Lock battery or any other battery that's suitable. 
so I'll be showing how to how to actually um, resolder to cut this off, resolder, and basically test that it works. Well, thank you very much for your time. You all take care. Bye bye.